What if I stand beside you? There it is. There's a stuff right there. My shoe probably smells like a lot of dogs. Well, it's, this 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 happens whenever you just drop the leash, and then all of a sudden he feels like he doesn't have the the control. I guess he doesn't feel protected by you. So once I have the leash, then so he understands the leash is is like empowerment, which isn't a bad thing. But of course, I want to be able to teach him just like Elliot to not use the leash. Right, and I put the um. Hey, how's it going guys? I just completed a three hour drive, um, one and a half, two am back from, well not completed, I'm still on the road. I still have about half an hour stuck in traffic. I went to go pick up one of my client's dogs. This one is a Border Collie. He's a relatively small Border Collie, I'm about like 35 pounds, under one years old. Um, he has the ability to identify epileptic seizures that his mom has. Um, bought from, bought by his, her husband um, because they figured that they'll try to create their own service dog. Um, I wish they asked me to assess the dog prior to purchasing because not all working dogs have the temperament. And so even though Gallagher has the ability to identify um, his mother's epileptic seizures rather well actually I do have um, some containers of of her sweat during seizures that will help me teach him to notify the the public whenever she she is under duress but other than that at the moment I would consider him a fail because of the amount of fear aggression now um, the, um, the client told me that she's never seen him act the way she, he has when I approached him and this is usually very common I'm not a small guy and I do smell like what I like to tell my clients I smell like dog balls because all my protection dogs are intact and they leave this hormones scent and uh, don't believe what everybody tells you that um, it's the it's the intact dogs that are aggressive it's quite often the opposite that uh, the castrated dogs don't like the scent of an intact dog, so they tend to instigate. But that's a whole different story all in itself. Um, he is here with me for about two weeks as she is going off on vacation and at a good time because he is under one years old and he's showing um, preliminary signs of fear aggression. I'm going to try to instill my confidence onto him so he can learn to cope with his environment a little bit better hopefully a lot better because he should not be allowed to bark or growl at any strangers and right now he is afraid of his environment very afraid of me but because I'm showing that I don't really care what he thinks he's starting to realize very quickly that he better start listening to me otherwise life's gonna suck for him so Gallagher has a large amount of stress if I can get him to understand that life is easier than it think than he thinks and can get uncomfortable in his own skin then he can live a happier life and I tend to be pretty good at that because I can easily tell myself that life is easy and I can instill that onto him meaning we'll just we'll just plow right through walk through anything that would generally cause a little bit of hesitation to the to the average person because 
Um, I guess you can call me a like that. I just don't care sometimes how people think. And you have to be like that if you want to be a trainer. You have to go into scenarios with a dog and not have to worry about what other people think because that dog needs to learn. I don't care if you're scared of dogs. You need to get over it because my dog needs to learn. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm stuck in traffic right now. I'm pretty sure this is semi-illegal. I'm not sure if it's okay to talk to yourself nowadays that you're not supposed to be talking on the phone. So I'll just leave it at that. And uh, yeah, have a great day, guys. All right, bye. So we're finally home and you're watching me uh, trying to be as slow as a sloth, <laughs> petting him, trying not to pet directly above the head, um, being as non-confrontational as possible, just so he understands that, um, that he won't be startled in any way. In this clip, I'm using my right hand cat, Fluffy Bottoms. Um, he's really good at helping me introduce to the other dogs my temperament. And so, in this case, Gallagher is watching me pet Fluffy Bottoms, and hopefully, he's um, deducing that I'm a non threat. Day two, Gallagher is learning to be more playful and he's opening up showing a lot of signs of uh, friendliness and playfulness towards fluffy bottoms fluffy bottoms not quite feeling it at the moment um, because gallagher has that uh, hurting mentality so he's all constantly charging at him but fluffy bottoms takes it as a champ and just kind of lays there because dogs really don't know what to do when a cat doesn't run away so today my primary goal is just to establish a relationship. He can do stuff like this, jumping on me, and I'm not going to correct him. I need to pick my own battles. And in this case, the battle is for him to trust me and nothing more. So we'll, I'll do a very passive negation, but in this case, it's not the time to correct this jumping. Pick your battles. Still embracing that sloth like movement. <laughs> so during the first few days, I rarely ever say no. No should be um, saved for only emergencies. Most owners would overuse no and overuse their name as a negative. So I don't use their names in any negative form. It's usually a positive for recalls and the no is reserved for something extreme. So you'll only hear me say something like ah and that would be enough for them to understand that maybe I don't like that. He has a tendency of pulling and walking in front at the moment. As I learn his pace and his sensitivity, I'll slowly correct that. But I'm not going to be entirely proactive because I don't want to scare him in any way. So right here you can see Fluffy Bottoms being a little annoyed, but all he does is do these warning taps. I mean, he can hiss and he can be a real cat and slap him in the face, but he's he's being really nice to him. And uh, that's one of the reasons why Fluffy Bottoms is actually a very important part of my training with uh, dogs with hypersensitivity.
you look on that uh, front door mat, you can see the tear. Um, he tore it up a little bit and it's, you know, it's no big deal. That's just the life of a dog trainer. Um, this has probably been changed out three times and that's fine. I don't really care for any doormat in the first place. But the important part is to be calm and um, be considerate. Um, consider the fact that he probably was stressed out and felt the need to tear something up. And that's going to happen. You just got to pick your own battles. And um, if... If it's not time to correct him and he's not confident enough, then don't correct him. And that's just how I deal with things. Every dog is different and I treat them in an individual basis. Gallagher is fear-based, so I'm not trying to do anything that fear makes him fearful. But I want him to be aware of what he's doing. Alright, thanks for watching guys. And uh, I'll be sure to post a before and after real soon. Thanks.